What I'd like to do now is get a little bit more specific with the Flash interface. I wanna talk about panels, and I also wanna take you through the toolbox as well. So in this exercise, we'll take a look at panels first. So we've already been introduced to panels in a very brief way. You got introduced to the library panel there on the right, the properties panel, the panels down at the bottom, and I briefly mentioned the flyout panels here towards the, the right-hand side there anyway, this column of icons. Now let's dig a little bit deeper into our panels. First of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head up to the window menu, and inside the window menu, we see all of the available panels that we have here inside Flash. There's tons and tons and tons of panels. Now, before you begin feeling overwhelmed, I wanna mention that a lot of panels you probably won't even use, or maybe some panels will kinda of come and go as you work through your projects. Other panels you'll have open all the time. And again, some panels you might not use at all. So. Don't feel too overwhelmed. What I'm gonna do here though, is from the window menu, I'm gonna head down and choose actions. Go ahead and follow me along there. And there's our actions panel. Now what's interesting here is some of our panels are docked or locked to the flash interface. The actions panel here actually floats. So this dark gray bar across the top of the actions panel, we can actually drag on this guy and move him around and reposition him on screen. So he's floating on top of the flash interface, okay? Now, there's a few things that I wanna talk about, and I'm gonna use the actions panel for my example. There's a few common elements that all of our panels have in common. First of all, over towards the, the top right corner of every single panel, we'll find this icon here, kind of a drop down arrow with a, a series of lines there. That'll open up what's referred to as the panel menu. And as I say, every single panel has a panel menu. So here's the actions panel menu. And if I flip over to the properties panel, there's that same icon, there's the property panel menu. Not very exciting, is it? Let me show you the library panel menu. I'll flip over to the library panel and then click on his menu there in the top right corner, and there we go, there's the library panel menu. Again, giving us commands, giving us options related to that specific panel, okay? So that's how it works. You can even tour through some of the other panels we have available, our swatches panel, for instance. There's the swatches panel menu, or a line, or color, or whatever you like. Every single panel has one of these panel menus, okay? Now, what else can we do? Well. In the previous exercise, I showed you this very briefly. We could expand and collapse our panels. I'm sure you recall this. I had double-clicked on Timeline to collapse him down to the bottom of the interface, and then I double-clicked on his tab to bring him back to life, if you'll remember. Or the column of icons, as I just showed you with swatches, we can click on these guys, have them expand out, and then click away to have them collapse back down. Now, how does this work when we're dealing with a floating panel like the actions panel? How does that work? Well, there's actually a couple of different ways that we can do this. I can double click on the actions panel tab where it actually reads actions, double click on that, and I can collapse down the panel like this, which is wonderful, and maybe I'll go and position them up towards the top of my interface, maybe something like that. And then I could double click on actions again to expand him out if I'm so inclined. Or what I could do is I could double click on this dark gray bar across the top, double click on that. And what that does is that actually it collapses down the panel to just an icon here. It says actions. And if I click on that, I get sort of a, a similar flyout behavior as I get with the panels over towards the right hand side. So it's entirely up to you. Maybe I'll kind of tuck this guy over towards the left hand side and keep him there as I need him and I can go ahead and click on that icon to expand him out if I need him. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Double click on the gray bar across the top to bring him back to life. Now, how you choose to work inside Flash, and of course how you choose to work inside your other Creative Suite applications is entirely up to you. I'm just giving you as many different options as I can. Last but not least, what we can do, of course, is we can close out of the Actions panel by clicking on the Close icon in the top corner there. Of course, I can always go and get my Actions panel back from the Window menu. So again, 
some panels, I'll use them, I'll pop them open from the window menu, I'll make my changes, I'll use them as I need them for my project, and then once I'm finished, I'll go ahead and collapse them or close them, depending on exactly what I'm doing, okay? All right, now I wanna show you just a couple of other quick things here, just while they come to mind. I've been showing you lots of different ways to work with your panels. Another thing that we can do from the window menu and I won't go and show you a bunch of these, but I'll at least make you aware of this. You'll notice that a lot of our panels have keyboard shortcut equivalents. So for example, there's my actions keyboard shortcut, at least here on the Mac, or behaviors, shift F3 here on the Mac, and so on. Align, command K, or control K over on the Windows side, if you like. So if you want to make use of your keyboard shortcuts, go for it. Once again, I know a few of them. I don't know them all, but I know the ones that I use all the time. Transform is one I use all the time. Align is another one that I use all the time. All right. The other thing that I wanted to mention too is we have this other panels submenu, and we have even more panels available. Accessibility. There's our history. If you're used to using history in programs like Photoshop, well, Flash has history as well. Scene strings and web services. So again, I'm more just making you aware of everything that we have available here. Okay, so I think that's a, a fairly decent tour of the panels. If you're still kind of scratching your head going, well, I don't know when I should be using swatches or when should I be using a line or how do the different icons inside the align panel function, the specifics for each individual panel, well, that's what we're gonna be looking at as we start building our projects out. I'll say, all right, let's head to the align panel and go ahead and click on this icon, this is what it does. Or we might find ourselves inside the swatches panel, creating and saving new swatch colors. Okay, so don't get hung up on how to use the individual panels. That's really what the rest of the training is all about. I'm gonna leave you with one final trick here related to our panels. This is kind of a neat trick. Try this on your keyboard. Try hitting F4 on your keyboard. And what that does is that disables all of your panels and also the toolbox over on the right hand side. Hit F4 once again, and everything comes back to life. So it's just a neat little toggle there that you can use if you find these panels kind of getting in your way as you're building your projects, you can temporarily disable them. Okay, so there's your panels. I hope that's working for you. Now, let's go and take a look at Flash's toolbox.